What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you can see from the box sitting right next to me, in today's video we're going to be unboxing and reviewing something very large and very big. This is the Narwhal T10 vacuuming and mopping robot. Now it's not something that I'm very familiar with and it's actually something that my wife ordered. But if it's something that's going to simplify and automate our home life or some of the tasks at home, then I'm definitely all in for unboxing, reviewing and testing it out. So stay tuned and we're going to go ahead and unbox this, set it up and review it to see how well it works. All right, so like I mentioned before, this is not really a brand that I'm familiar with, and my wife has actually been researching this for a while because she's wanted to replace our existing Roomba for a while now. Now, to be completely honest, I have seen some good and some bad reviews, and we figured that we'd try this out for ourselves to see if it does make a good replacement for our existing Roombas. Now, right off the bat, because I am not familiar with this brand, it's going to be a completely honest video and review of this product itself. This is not a sponsored video and Narwhal did not send this to us to review. In fact, my wife ended up buying this on her own, so we spent our own money to see how well this thing would work. So, whether it's good or bad, we'll let you know what we like about it and what we don't like about it. Now, one thing's for sure, this thing is not light. In fact, carrying it up to my studio, was not very easy. This thing actually weighs quite a lot. So I'm expecting that there's gonna be a lot of hardware and a lot of accessories inside this box. So let's go ahead and start by unboxing this to see what it comes with. Now, because this box is fairly huge, I will do my best to try to share with you the whole unboxing experience. But because of the limited space that I have, uh, we'll try to fit whatever we can on the screen as well as the overhead camera to show you you know, exactly what this unboxing experience is going to be like. Now I'm actually going to have to stand up for this video because again this box is about half my size so you know it is a pretty big box. Okay so from a unboxing perspective there's this pull tab here on the end which I guess you use to rip and separate the box so you can just lift it up. So that makes this whole unboxing experience just a little bit easier because the box is easy to remove. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and lift this and try not to hit my overhead camera. Okay, so it does look like this comes in several boxes inside the bigger box. So you've got one box for the vacuum itself, and then you've got one box for the, I guess this is the uh, base station. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this base station. Oh, so the whole box just lifts off actually, okay. Okay, so as you can see, there is a QR code on the back of this box that you can scan that will take you to the Narwhal website so you can learn more about the vacuum itself and its functions and features. So the model number for this is YJC-B007. Uh, it includes a base station, the vacuuming module, the mopping module, as well as a power cable. All right, so let's go ahead and check this thing out. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and take out the base station because that's going to get rid of at least the majority of the bigger box. And again, it is not light. The base station is wrapped in this anti-static bag. We'll go ahead and just rip that open. So we can take this base station out. And what I like about it is this, it's this glossy white plastic material. It looks pretty sleek and futuristic. It's got a very contemporary design. Okay, so this is the base station itself. And inside there's a pull-out drawer. 
which I guess is where also the robot goes. And in this pullout drawer or box, whatever you call it. So this thing does come with, looks like four different mops. So it comes with four mops and two cartridges, I guess, that you connect this to the bottom of the uh, robot itself. Um, so, okay, so two mops on the modules themselves and then two replacement mops. And I'm assuming these are attached using some kind of Velcro. So yeah, there is a Velcro um, base to this attachment where you can uh, attach these mops. Okay, uh, in addition to that, this looks like some kind of belt. Okay, this looks like some kind of rubber, rubberized belt, so. It feels kind of magnetic. So we'll see what this is in a little bit. Uh, you've got these little sponge rollers. I'm not sure what they are either. So we'll see what that is. And then of course, this is probably the vacuuming unit. It looks like it's got metal attachment, so it must be magnetized. Um, so uh, this is the vacuum attachment itself, which is one piece, whereas the mops are two pieces. Okay, and then you've got replacement uh, vacuum dusters uh, or blades or whatever you want to call them for the vacuum attachment itself. Okay, and then of course you've also got the power cable. And I assume this is the power cable for the base station itself. So we'll just go ahead and take that out. So it is your standard two prong outlet. Okay, so we'll put this tray aside. All right, so we'll take a look at this in a minute. Uh, so it does look like there is an LCD display on here. Not sure if it's touch screen or not. Uh, so it does say short press to exit. So there's a home button and then a play button. So short press to pause and resume. Long press to end current task. And then on the home button, it's short press to exit or recall and then long press to create a map. So that's something that's nice about this vacuum is that it maps out your whole area so that you can also probably control it through the app and also see the progress and where the uh, mop vacuum has either vacuumed or, or mopped. So that's always nice. Okay, so we'll put that aside. We'll take these accessories and put them aside. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox the vacuum itself. Okay. So vacuum itself, it comes with a little pamphlet, probably with the instructions. So inside, let's see, you have a quick start pamphlet. You've got your operating manual, which is pretty thick. So probably a lot of functions and features for this vacuum. And then you've got another quick start card uh, that you can use as a walkthrough. So there is an app for this, and then there's a QR code on this so you can download the app which I assume will control this uh, robot. Then you've got maintenance records and a warranty card. So all things that we'll probably need to keep and I'll put those aside because we're gonna need to set this thing up. Okay, let's go ahead and take this out. All right, now for the robot itself, which also is in a static bag, which is pretty nice. And the robot itself is also this glossy white plastic material. Okay, so with the robot, on the robot itself looks like there is a play button, which is that pause and resume. Uh, it's got the radar antenna right here at the top. Um, it's got, I guess this is What's it say? Please remove it before use. Okay, so this is probably the bumper. So we can tell when it's bumping into different objects. So it, it'll make it turn around. So when you do open the cover, it looks like inside there is a uh, filter inside there. 
um, which can be removed just by simply lifting up the handle and pulling it out. Um, so that's pretty nice. So it's got a small compartment for capturing the dust. You know, it's not a very large compartment, but then again, you know, none of these really have large compartments for actually capturing a lot of debris and dirt and stuff. So you're going to need to clean it out uh, frequently. Now that's one thing that I heard about this is that this is not a self-cleaning or self-emptying vacuum. In fact, I think the technology for this one focuses primarily on the mopping capabilities. So this is a mop robot primarily, and then secondarily, it's also made for vacuuming. So it can do both. However, you know, the, I think the two reservoirs in here are strictly for the mop feature. So there is a, so what this will do is it will clean these mops and collect all the dirty water and siphon that into the dirty water reservoir and then refill or soak these mops with clean water. And from what I understand, it will go ahead and soak the mop enough to do its job. The, the, the vacuum will go out and mop the floor and after one cycle, it will return, clean this mop up and uh, drain the dirty water from it into the reservoir, the dirty water reservoir, and then uh, soak the mop again and then go out and do its second cycle or however many cycles it needs to clean the floor. So we'll go ahead and test that feature out and confirm uh, how this thing operates once we get everything set up. So um, there are instructions on this unit itself. So there is the power button, which is covered by this cover. Uh, so you press and hold for three seconds to reset the robot. You can press and hold for two seconds to start and stop. And then there's also press both buttons simultaneously for two seconds to reset the Wi-Fi. So this is again Wi-Fi enabled, so I assume you can also connect it to your home automation devices as well. And then from this for this play button, uh, press and hold for two seconds to end current task, or B, short press to pause and resume. So you can also operate this robot manually as well. Okay, uh, so on the bottom, looks like you've got your standard wheels that can move up and down. So, you know, adjust for different surfaces. And these are non-stick tracks on it, so it can pretty much move on any type of surface. Uh, it's also got this rotary wheel here, so it can make turns. So from a setup perspective, I think the way you connect these mops is align the mop hole with the handle of the first tray. So basically these are little hexagon ports on here, so it will only fit one way um, based on the pattern itself. But you align it up and then you just connect it, I guess. Yeah, so it, once you line it up, you just press down and it connects and holds itself in place. Uh, same thing for this one. So you just line it up and then press down and it connects. So that's how you connect the mop. In addition, in removing it is pretty easy. You just pull up on it, looks like. And then I guess for the vacuum attachment, same thing. Um, it fits probably only one way. Yeah, so basically you slide in from the front and then you drop down and then it's magnetized so it'll hold in place as well. So from what I understand is you can either mop or vacuum, but you can't do both of them simultaneously. So when the vacuum attachment is attached, it's gonna strictly do the vacuum job. And then when you remove this, when, if you, so when you put the mop pads on, this thing actually won't vacuum and you won't be able to because the mops actually do cover up the vacuum hole. And I do believe these are magnetic as well because I do feel a magnetic pull on these once we attach them. So very easy to install and set up. Okay, so I was doing a little bit reading of the instructions, which in this case is helpful because we do have some components and parts that, you know, I didn't know what they did. So these little gray things are filter sponges. So they do go inside this reservoir tank um, and I guess serve as a filter for some of the water. And then this, of course, is a magnetic strip, as I guessed. 
And what you do with this is that you place this around the perimeter of an area where you don't want this vacuum to clean. So this will keep the vacuum away from certain areas and kind of sets a boundary for where it can't clean or where it shouldn't go. So good for, let's say, uh, carpets or you know areas that you have sensitive floors or something or don't want that area mopped or vacuumed. Uh, so it's not very long, I guess, so it's you're limited to the space that you can surround But I guess if you've got something against the wall, you know, you can use that and I'm, I'm pretty sure they do sell more of these um, On Narwhal's website, so you can probably buy additional ones of these magnetic strips Okay, so that is the vacuum itself um, It is also fairly heavy um, But you know weighs pretty much the same as an actual Roomba so, you know, if you've ever lifted a Roomba, you know, it's pretty much the same weight. Okay, uh, there were also some interesting things that I read about in this instruction manual. So, there's actually some accessories like this hook cutter, which did not come in this package. So I'm not sure if that's something I'm missing or if it's part of another thing another model so of course in the tank itself there is an overflow sensor so if it feels that there is water or if the water is going to be overflowing it will shut the system off now what's also nice is this is a these are charging conductive pads so what this thing does is it automatically backs up until it touches the back plates on the charging base station itself so that uh, conductively, you know, it charges this through touch, uh, through connection on these two metal pads on the back of this uh, robot. Okay, so let's go ahead and open the base station and see what this thing looks like inside. Now what's also nice about this Narwhal base station is that you can remove this little tray in case you do need to clean the inside to say a lot of dust or debris gets in there. Now the bottom of this removable tray does have little holes in them and that allows it to drain the dirty water from the sponge into these little suction tubes right at the bottom of the base of this. As you can see, kind of, there's two tubes back there. So it sprays it with water and then also drains the water upwards into the dirty water reservoir. Uh, so you can just take this tray out and clean it if you need to and then just easily just place it back in. Okay, and then to open this, okay, we'll put this in the front here. Now, when you open this, on the inside, you will see the blue colored reservoir and then the clear colored reservoir. So this is where you would put the clean water and then you fill it up to max level. And then the clean, dirty water will empty into this clear one. So again, basically this base station does not empty the vacuum, it just, deals with and cleans the mop and empties the dirty water from the mop uh, for this robot as well. So, so at first glance or first experience, that's probably the one downside of this is you still have to empty the vacuum itself. Uh, it does not empty or auto empty for you like most of the new Roombas and home vacuums, automated vacuums. But I do guess that this is more focused on mopping rather than uh, vacuuming. So hopefully, you know, in the future models, you know, you'll be able to both auto empty the vacuum as well as clean the mop it, as itself because there does seem to be plenty of room to incorporate all three uh, by making these water reservoirs just a little bit smaller. Okay, so now that we've got the Narwhal T10 base station as well as vacuuming mopping robot unboxed, let's go ahead and plug it in and we'll test this thing out to see how well it works. Okay, so installing the Narwhal app should be fairly easy. Basically, all you need to do is scan the QR code that comes in the quick setup booklet, and then it'll take you to the app to download it. Once you download and install it, it takes you to this first screen. And we'll select America as our region. Uh, input our specific information. Then we'll send the verification code. Okay, once we have the code, and then click login, uh, we'll call this 
Hello, family. Okay, so next we'll have to add the new device. And I guess in order to do that, we do need to plug this device in. So we'll plug it in. And it does have this nice looking LCD on it. Go ahead and add a new device. So let's go ahead and add this to our Wi-Fi. So just a word of advice, you are not going to be able to connect this to a 5 gigahertz network. So you will need to use a 2.4 gigahertz band in order to connect this to your home. So we'll go ahead and connect it. Okay, and you will need to turn on the robot as well. So you're going to have to press and hold the power button so that you can power on the robot. So now the robot is powered on and it has a solid LED. And then above operation is confirmed. Click next step. Enter network setup mode. So press both buttons simultaneously and hold for two seconds. So we are going to have to open up the robot and press both buttons simultaneously and hold it. Prepared for connection. Please follow the instructions on app. Okay. So now the above operation is confirmed. Click next step. Okay, so now we have to connect it to the narwhal. Okay, so narwhal. Okay, so now it is connected. Okay, and now it's just a waiting game for it to connect to the network. So, connecting 43, 44% and continues to count up. Network connection failed. Please try again. Okay, so let's try that again. Uh, so we do have to connect to our network. Okay, okay press and hold. Prepared for connection. Please follow the instructions on app. Okay. Next steps. And it does say that you need to put the robot next to the router. Okay, I'm going to have to reset this so it detects the narwhal. It looks like it failed. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this robot and put it right next to the router itself and see if that works. So. Connection. Please follow the instructions on app. All right guys, so as you can see, the robot is now charging in the base station. Um, one thing I found a challenge, as you noticed through some of the footage, was adding this thing to our network. I don't know what I was doing wrong, but I tried about 20 to 30 times and I was not able to successfully add it to the network. So then I went to bed and woke up and tried again and still was not able to connect it to the network. Somehow, my wife did the same thing I did after I gave up and was able to get it added. So we now have this robot added to our network. Um, but from what I understand, you can also contact support and they'll also have a special way to connect this thing or help you connect it or help you to get it connected. So that's worth a try as well. But I guess just trying multiple times, you'll eventually get it to connect to your network. Otherwise, you know, you do have the option to contact support who can also help you get it connected. I don't know if they have a special way. Um, I do know in the app that they did have a new function where you can connect it 
to the network by scanning the barcode on the bottom, but I was never able to get to that option or that screen. So I'm still waiting for a reply from the customer service group because it is the weekend. So I expect that maybe I'll get some support on Monday when that rolls around. But, you know, we did get it successfully added and I guess my recommendation there is just to keep trying and at some point maybe you'll get it connected. So we'll see how this robot works. Okay guys, so we have now gone and cleaned the house up a little bit and removed everything off of the floor so that we can start the initial process of mapping our house so that the robot knows where to mop, where to vacuum and what the boundaries are. So as you can see from the app itself, we do now have it installed and we called our uh, robot Wally Bear. So he is now in standby mode charging. And what we do is we can click on him and then we can click on the map. We'll click on mapping. Start mapping. So as you can see on the app itself, he is starting to map. And what's nice is this robot has LiDAR, so it will go and map. And because it's using LiDAR, it will create a mapping of the entire floor space, which will tell it where it can map or where it can mop and where it can vacuum. So I'm gonna to switch to my phone and you can see that it is gonna be mapping everything. Now I've gone and moved the camera out of the way because I don't want it captured because it is using LiDAR. But it is now mapping the first floor of our house. And I'm not exactly sure how long this will take, uh, but it'll probably take a little while since we've got a lot of space and we didn't set any kind of boundaries. So it's not only gonna map the dining area, the kitchen, the living room, but it's also gonna map the master bedroom and the master bathroom. So just a lot um, of space for it to map. So we'll come back once it's mapped everything to see what the finished map looks like. So one thing that I do like about this Narwhal T10 robot is that it is not as loud as the Roomba that we currently have. And I mean, you can still hear it, but it definitely is not as annoyingly loud. So that is definitely a benefit and a positive thing about this robot. So right now I am kneeled down next to it. So you can hear what the sound of the robot is. I mean, it is audible, but it is not super audible. It's not annoyingly audible. So as you can see on the app itself, it has mapped pretty much the entire first floor, not counting our master bedroom. And the obstacle avoidance is pretty amazing on this robot. If it does get stuck in a tight place, it can also intelligently reverse out of that space. So that is definitely a nice thing about it as well. So the other thing you see on the map is there is a white little icon or avatar for the robot itself that shows you where it is, what it's looking at. And then it's also got a pinpoint, which is that orange dot which shows you where the home base is. So pretty accurate. So that mapping took about 10 minutes for the robot itself to map the entire first floor. Now it didn't complete the master bedroom or the master bathroom. Now once the mapping is complete, you have a new map icon which you can click on, which will allow you to manage the no-go zones and manage the different rooms so you can specify where you want to mop. So for example, in the hardwood areas, I can specify where exactly I want to mop and then also where I don't want to mop. Um, and then you can also manage your no-go zones by drawing it on the map as well. 
um, but you can really just specify the spaces as well. So there is, it does also specify rooms, so that is pretty nice as well. So one thing to note is if you do move the base station, you will need to remap everything again. But as you can see from the initial setup or the initial mapping, it doesn't take very long at all for the Narwhal T10 to map the entire space. Okay guys, so we did end up remapping everything and this time included the master bedroom. So as you can see, the map of our first floor is now fully complete where we've captured the living room, the kitchen, the dining room, the utility room, as well as our master bathroom, our master bedroom, and the closet. So the entire first floor has been mapped and it was all done within, I think, what, 20 minutes? So fairly quick. And I think that's just because, you know, this thing uses LiDAR so it doesn't have to hit every single corner because it can uh, shoot beams out to detect all the different uh, walls and obstacles in its way. So a very quick mapping job that this Narwhal T10 did. Um, so now it is idle waiting for us to provide it instructions. But before we do that, we're gonna identify where are the areas that it should mop and where are the areas that it should vacuum. Um, and then also where the no-go zones are. So we're gonna do that within the app itself and then send this thing to vacuum at first and test out its vacuum capabilities. So once we set that up, we'll go ahead and uh, test those features out. Okay guys, so we are going to do a quick test of its vacuuming capabilities and how well it can vacuum. So I'm gonna do a quick clean and we'll just start it off. So on the app, I am going to click quick clean and start it off. So you gotta select the room you wanna quick clean and then you just tell it to go. Okay, so right now it's going through and doing its quick cleaning uh, of the dining room, but eventually it will come all the way to the kitchen where I have dropped some coffee grounds on the floor for it to clean up. So we'll see how well it does against that. Okay, so he is now headed towards the kitchen and as you can see on the app, and the coffee grounds are over there. And here he goes for the coffee ground, well, around the coffee grounds. <laughs> he just went around the coffee grounds. Now what's good about the app is that on the app itself, it does show where the robot has vacuum. So as you can see, he is focusing on the perimeter first. Um, and it just shows his pathway using a white line so that it knows where it has vacuumed and where it hasn't vacuumed. And while it's vacuuming, when it's low on power, it will automatically return to the home base to charge and then continue off where it left off once it's fully charged. Okay, so as you can see, he is following a pattern. And if that pattern is correct, he should hit the coffee grounds pretty soon. And 
here it See, and from a vacuuming perspective, he actually did a really good job and sucked up most of those coffee grounds. So as you can see on the app, the pattern that he is following. So he is pretty much covering the inner area now and he did do a pretty good job cleaning up the coffee grounds that I left on the floor. Okay guys, so another good thing about this T10 robot is that it will let you know when the dustbin is getting full. So it will stop and tell you to empty the dustbin. And again, you know, this is a small robot, so you're, if you're cleaning a large area, you will need to remember to check on it once in a while uh, to make sure that you empty the dustbin because it can only carry so much. So to do that, all you do is lift up the robot's top, pull up the handle, and pull out the dustbin. So as you can see, it's got a ton of stuff that it's cleaned off of our uh, floor. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this, bring it over to our trash can, and to empty it, I believe you just pull this lever, and just let everything come out. So as you can see, huge amount of dust on our floor. Our floors are pretty dirty. And then once that's done, all you gotta do is take it back to the robot, clean out any additional mess, and then place the dustbin back in. Close the lid and start them up again. Continue vacuuming. Okay, so one thing that I learned is that when the robot is in cleaning mode or has started cleaning, or if you're removing the dustbin, you don't want to move the robot because it will lose track of where it is and get confused. So you want to leave it where it is to remove the dustbin and then just empty the, so just take out the dustbin and then take it and empty it and then place it back in the robot without actually moving the robot. Same thing for when it's cleaning. You don't wanna move it unless it's run into some kind of obstacle, asks for your help or asks for you to place it somewhere new because it will get confused of where it is on the map. Okay guys, so we are now going to test the mopping feature for this Narwhal T10 robot. So in order to do that, First, we're going to need to fill the reservoir with clean water. And the way you do that is you lift the lid on the base station itself. And there will be a section or a container for clean water, which is this blue container. And then there is another container for the dirty water where, you know, when the robot returns to the base station and the station cleans the robot is where all the dirty water will go. So in order to do that, all we gotta do is pull this container out. And if you'll notice on the container itself, there is a max line for where you should fill the water up to. And the instructions were specific uh, and said not to fill above that max line. So we're gonna fill it with water and then we're gonna add a little bit of floor detergent. Okay, so when it comes to filling up this container, you can fill it up with just plain old water. However, if you add detergent, it becomes a little bit more effective when mopping the floors for cleaning the floors. Now Narwhal does have proprietary detergent that you can buy on their site and it does come in the form of dissolvable detergent sheets which you just dump into the water and it dissolves. But now for our usage we are going to go ahead and use this hard floor sanitized detergent 
which you know we did a little bit of research and found that it is safe and can be something that is used with this system so based on feedback and other people who own this narwhal you know there is feedback that you could use this detergent and it shouldn't cause any problems with the system especially because it is also liquid so that should allow it to work with this narwhal robot. Okay guys, so to fill this little reservoir up with water, all you have to do is release the locking clamp on the side and pop it right open. So you'll notice inside there is a filter and that sponge is what's gonna you know, take out any kind of debris or anything uh, when, uh, when soaking the pads for the robot. So to fill it up, you know, so the sink was a little bit shallow in the guest bathroom, so we're gonna use the kitchen sink to fill this up. But basically all you have to do is fill it up to about the max line or just a little bit below it, but don't overfill it. Okay guys, so as you can see, we filled the water up to just under the max line. There's no need to fill it all the way up. Um, but according to the instructions, and how much you use it, this should last for up to a week. But if you've got a large area that you're mopping, it may be sooner that you need to refill this reservoir. So using this hard floor sanitizer shouldn't be an issue because it's what we currently use to clean our floors. And then at the same time, it is also liquid based, so it does dissolve in the water. So it shouldn't clog up the tubes or any of the components within the reservoir itself. Uh, but you know, we'll see. Okay, once that's done, all you have to do is close the lid and then lock it back into place. Okay guys, and then once you've got the water filled up and the lid back on, you just slightly place it back in and it should be ready to go. You close the lid. And then the next thing is to take the robot and swap out the vacuum. Okay, so we are now gonna take the robot out We're gonna turn him upside down. And then all you have to do to remove this vacuum accessory is just lift up and pull out. It is magnetized over here. Now for the mopping pads themselves, they'll only fit in one way because there is a special pattern to it. It's like a diamond pattern. So you will just play, and they are also magnetized at the top. So there is a magnet here. Uh, that will connect them into place. So you just simply place it in and it automatically snaps into place. Same thing for the second pad. It automatically snaps into place. And then once that's done, you just turn the robot over and put them back in. And he's ready to mop. Okay, so what is nice about this robot is that it can detect if it has the mop or the vacuum accessories installed. So right now, as you can see on the app itself, it does know that it's got the mopping accessory attached. So it says now that it's mopping standby. So there is either a sensor or depending on which magnet is connected or touching in contact with whatever accessory is installed, will tell the robot exactly what accessory is installed and if it should be in a mopping mode or a vacuum mode. So pretty intelligent robot um, in accessories. So it is on mopping standby now and we're going to select the area where we want to mop and we'll just make it mop this den area. Okay, and now the status has changed to mopping. So the robot has come out of the base and we'll start mopping the area. So as you can see, it does leave a little wet mark, wet streak. And as it's mopping, this 
And as the robot is mopping, you can tell that it is a very quiet robot. It's even more quiet than when it's vacuuming. So you can see there is a little streak for where it's mopped. But it is an ultra quiet robot. And when this robot is done mopping, we will see how dirty our floors actually are because they do look clean, but I'm pretty sure that they are dirty, especially knowing that there was a lot of dirt when we did the vacuuming. So we'll see once it's done. Now, like all LiDAR based robots, it will actually start mopping and vacuuming the perimeter before it actually starts mopping and vacuuming the internal area of the perimeter that you've set. Now the robot in itself will also determine when the mop needs to be cleaned or re-wetted and it will return back to the base station on its own to both clean the mop and to re-wet it. as you can see that it just did there. So it is again washing the mop pads on the bottom of the robot and re-wetting them and then it will come back out and continue to wash. So completely automated, completely hands off and will maintain itself. So as you can see again on the app, it is currently at the base station washing the pads and it still also keeps track of where it has already mopped and where it has been and once it's done wetting re-wetting and washing the pads it will go back out and continue its job of mopping the rest of the floor so expect that it will continue to come back to the base station a few times while it cleans the floor, especially if you've got a lot of land area to cover. Okay guys, so I went ahead and paused the mopping activity for the robot to see, you know, just how dirty our floor is uh, based on the area that the robot has already mopped. So as you can see, our floor is pretty dirty and it has done a pretty good job cleaning the floor. At least it's very thick and span looking. So definitely the robot does a great job at mopping the floor. Okay, so I'm gonna go let, let it continue its cleaning action. And I think right now it's headed back to the base to wash the pads and also to re-wet the pads as well so it can continue to clean. So we'll Return continue this. Okay guys, so I am also interested to see what the dirty water reservoir looks like after it has done a couple of mop cleanings. So as you can see, it is pretty dirty. It is brownish colored water. So when it does clean the mop pads and then re-wets them, it does suck up all that dirty water and puts it into this wastewater reservoir, which you just go outside and dump or 
dump it down the down your drain or you know dispose of it properly. Okay guys, so right now I'm gonna set the Narwhal T10 to go ahead and clean the kitchen. And in the app, I'm gonna go ahead and select the kitchen itself. And then when you select the kitchen, you can select the number of times you want it to clean, so the number of rounds, as well as how wet or dry you want the mop to be. So I'm just gonna set that on normal and then activate it to go and clean the kitchen. Start mopping. Okay, so it is going to go and head towards the kitchen and begin mopping there. Okay, so as you can see on the map, the kitchen is highlighted as the area to be cleaned. And as it is making its way to the kitchen, it is also showing the map or where it's cleaned on the map itself. What's also nice about this mop is that it does dry as it is mopping. There is, I assume it just uses the vacuum area to blow air on the areas that it's mopped underneath the vacuum so that the floor is not as wet as it could be just to make sure you know it is also mopping and drying at the same time. Robot is that you can also schedule your vacuuming and mopping sessions. And then you can even schedule what areas you want to mop or vacuum and at what times. So if there's an area you don't want to mop but you want to vacuum, you can automatically set that in the app as well. So very customizable and you know very easy to use. It's pretty much set it and forget it and let the robot do its job. The only time you'll actually need to interfere with the robot is you know, when vacuuming, you'll probably just need to occasionally empty the dustbin, which it will notify you when it, that needs to be done. And then when you're mopping, you know, probably replacing the clean water reservoir and emptying the dirty re water reservoir, uh, which it will also send you a notification and let you know when that needs to be done as well. So not completely automated, but partially automated and carefree. So I would say this is a perfect device for anyone who, you know, just has a lot to do or is busy and doesn't have time to do simple cleaning tasks around the house. Uh, this is probably a great tool for managing, you know, upkeep of the house when you don't have time to do that regular cleaning maintenance. Only downfall, I guess, is the initial setup. Again, you know, I did have some challenges connecting it to the Wi-Fi, but once it's gotten set up, or once it is connected to the Wi-Fi, everything else is pretty easy and, you know, self-explanatory. Um, and over time, as the robot continues to clean, it does have the AI to learn and improve on the areas that it's cleaning so you're less likely to bump into walls and it's a little bit more efficient. Okay guys, so we've been experimenting and using the Narwhal T10 for a couple of days now. And each day we're discovering something new and learning how to better use this vacuum and mop robot. It's been extremely fun to say the least. Now you can currently buy this thing on Narwhal's website for about $799 with the original price being a little over $1,000, which I think is a pretty good deal. Now my initial thoughts after using this for a couple of days and having it cleaned the first floor of our house is that it works pretty good, and I'm definitely glad that we do have it and that we ended up buying it. The only real hiccup that I had with this Norwal T10 is the initial installation and connecting it to Wi-Fi. But after we got past that challenge, this vacuum and mop robot has been working just great without any kind of issues. Now, if you've got this vacuuming and mopping robot and are having the same issues connecting to Wi-Fi, 
I'd do a number of things. First, I would recommend that you try several times because eventually it will probably connect. But also, at the same time, I would make sure you chat with support on their website where they can help you with a workaround to get the issue fixed. Now because we did set ours up on the weekend, chat was not available, but I did leave them a message through chat, and then on Monday morning they promptly did respond to us. And then they also replied mentioning that they could fix the issue remotely by giving them our app ID. Now since we did set ours up on the weekend, chat was not available because it was out of office hours. Now another good thing about the Narwhal T10 system, in, you know, based on its size also, is the battery life. It's simply amazing. And even after cleaning the entire kitchen, the living room, and the dining area, the robot still had 83% battery left, which is just amazing. In fact, during the last few days of just playing with this device, I never had to worry about charging it, cleaning it, or maintaining the robot. It actually did everything virtually on its own. And there were even times where I didn't even know it was mopping or vacuuming the floor because it was so quiet. So that's just how great that robot is. And that's probably the biggest benefit of this robot that I've found is that I like that you can both mop and vacuum unattended and only needs very little intervention when it comes to cleaning out the dust tray or even replacing and throwing away the dirty water and clean water reservoirs. Now one thing that I do wish that was included with this robot system was that it could automatically empty the dust tray. But actually there is a newer, more upgraded version of this robot that I think can do that at a much greater price. But for now, I'm actually really happy with this Narwhal T10 robot. The robot operation and even the app itself has been pretty great, allowing you to see a map of the house as well as where the robot has either mopped or vacuumed. And it also allows for a lot of customization, including setting times and a schedule for vacuuming and mopping individual areas. So there's a lot of dynamic capabilities of both the app and the robot, which is something that's great. And like I mentioned previously, tons of features that I'm learning more and more about every day. And in fact, I think the robot, as it cleans more and more, is also learning as well, because I'm finding that day after day, it's bumping into the walls less and also a little bit more streamlined and smooth when it is cleaning. Now, if you ask me, based on the past couple of days of using this mop and vacuum robot, I would definitely recommend this as something you should buy if you want something that's automated, does a pretty good job, and if you're looking for something that will help with the upkeep of your home in between cleanings. Both my wife and I think it really does a good job maintaining and cleaning the floors, and if done regularly, will reduce the amount of work that you need to do to keep your home clean. Anyways, if you're interested in one of these for yourself, I will leave a link to it in the description section below. Now this isn't a referral link, so it doesn't really help me any, but if you do want to help out this channel and you found this video helpful, please make sure that you subscribe and smash that like button, and also make sure you ring that bell icon to get notified when I post new content. Until next time, I'll see ya.